I'm Laurie Mirabelli, an abstract artist living in downtown Toronto, and this week we're gonna do a little Q&A. Last week on my Instagram, I had put out uh, a question up in my story where I said, ask me anything. So many of you sent in some really cool questions and I wanted to take some time this week to actually answer them in a video. So if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, all the bells and whistles are down below. And if you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. YouTube loves knowing that you enjoy my content. So let's get started. I have a question here from Keely Soret Art. And the question is, do you dream what you will paint? And can you fully see the painting in your head and then replicate it? Well, the simple answer to this question is no, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. I actually do test out paintings in my mind. And I know that kinda sounds a little bit weird, but just before I go to sleep, or if I can't sleep, this is kinda what I do. I mean, I can do it anywhere, but I find that the two best places for me to paint in my mind would be in the Bahamas. Thanks to COVID, I'm not there. If I know tomorrow or the next day is going to be a painting day, then yes, I absolutely do do some practicing in my mind. And I think the easiest way to explain this is I go into that default mode of our brain where everything else on the exterior shuts down. And then I just go into almost like daydream. And in my daydream, even though it's nighttime, I am using my thoughts and the last little bit of brain power I have before I fall asleep, uh, like an Etch-a-Sketch. I think that dates me a little bit, but if you're using a computer program, it could be like Photoshop or Sketch or um, Draw, something like that, where I take a body of work and in my mind, I distort it, expand it, and try and change it up a little bit so that the work evolves, so that I'm not creating the same type of work all the time. I like my work to evolve, but still have some consistent Mirabelli themes throughout the entire Piece. So I hope that makes sense. And I do encourage that you use your thoughts and your mind to see images of your artwork. And, and it's a really cheap way of distorting them and playing around and trying to come up with new ideas. And it's great for your brain too. When you go into that default mode, it's really good for the, for the soul. I had a ton of questions about shipping, which kind of makes me giggle because I have made two videos on my YouTube channel that talk all about shipping. And so if you haven't already watched them, I would check out this video here and that should maybe answer some of your questions in regards to whether I ship my paintings rolled, um, shipping over seas, she's, uh, sip, <laughs> two, there are too many S's. Whether I ship overseas, whether I include my pricing in my shipping or not. So I think that video will help you guys for sure. I had a great question from Angie Kitchen Art. And the question was, will I ever tell the story of the very first painting that I ever sold? So the very first time I sold a painting was on Etsy back in 2008. I had just made the decision that I was going to try and become a full-time artist and I was going to list my paintings and I was going to make money and I was going to be able to quit my job and become a full-time artist. And little did I know 2021, here I am finally a full-time artist. So how exciting, um, this last year has been for me at the top. I can't remember the size of it and I'm going to dig up that photo. So hopefully I can put it up here for you that you can see the very first painting that I sold. <sighs> It's really hard for me to look back on those pieces, but I'm hoping that somewhere out there in the West Coast, she is still treasuring this piece because I'm sure at some point, if I keep going the way I'm going, that it might be worth a little bit more than what she paid for it in 2008. So I had, at the time I was painting in my bedroom back in Sault Ste. Marie, and I would like tack things up to the wall and I hadn't really figured out like where to buy canvas. I decided that I wanted to do a larger painting and I didn't know how to ship yet. And so I get why you guys keep asking me about shipping questions because there is a lot of factors that go into it. And so I thought I was gonna just simplify things by shipping out an unstretched canvas. And so I had it tacked up to my wall and I had painted the painting. Um, and I was so nervous to press the mouse key, you know, the click, click. And I posted it and sure enough, like two weeks later, somebody from the West Coast actually purchased that painting, but she didn't want it to arrive unstretched. So I had to figure out how to stretch the painting. First of all, get a frame that fit the actual painting because it was some 
obscure weird size that you can actually couldn't go to the store and buy a frame or a canvas stretcher bars for within two weeks of having to send that painting out i had to learn how to make my own stretcher frame and i had to learn how to stretch ah <sighs> so um youtube was my best friend back then i'll tell you and i managed to get it onto the frame but it was a little bit like it didn't it wasn't perfect let's just say it didn't quite wrap around i mean it did but i really had to stretch it i panicked a bit i i thought there was a moment where i was gonna have to message her back and say i'm really sorry but i made an error thankfully i didn't i was able to get it on the stretcher uh, the stretcher bars i managed to package it up i think at the time i went to like leon's and the brick and uh i went to their storage room and i asked them for any of their um like boxes and um wrapping material instead of going into the dumpster that i would take it from them and that built up a really great relationship with me in the furniture stores in sault st marie they would hold their foam material for me and their boxes and and um uh, every maybe about once or twice a month I would go to these places and I would pick up all of this stuff and I would take it home and I would store it like a little squirrel hoping that the next time I sold a painting I would have some packaging material so yeah you you got to do what works and you got to you got to figure things out on the fly sometimes but that story thankfully had a happy ending um hold on a minute let's see the next one uh, the next question I have here, you think I would have written these out and prepared, but I didn't. Okay, so I, I can't pronounce your name. And uh, Yvonne e Ivanik? Even, e even, no, I can't say it. I can't. But Kunst is at the end. What's the story behind being in a gallery in Denmark? This is probably one of the coolest things I think happened to me last summer in 2020. During this whole pandemic thing, um, my Instagram kind of blew up. I was really putting some uh, mental brain power towards growing my Instagram following. And sure enough, I had an Instagram message from Jan in Denmark, who owns the gallery that again, I can't pronounce, didn't her, uh, uh, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> Dinter <laughs> uh, Oh, I'm really, I really apologize to all the Danes out there. I do not speak Danish and I don't know how to, I'm horrible. I have no trill. Um, I can't even speak my own native language, which is uh, Italian. So Jan from Denmark sent me a, a message on my Instagram and uh, shared with me that he was enjoying my abstract work and was wondering if I would consider uh, being represented by his gallery. And so, of course, I was skeptical. You know, once you put yourself out there onto social media, you get, you can get a lot of spam, a lot of uh, people trying to take advantage of you. And for some reason, they all think that we're desperate artists and so that we'll jump at any opportunity. And so Jan, uh, the way he handled himself, I instantly felt that he was a legitimate person and that he was sincere in the request that he wa wanted to represent me. I normally have, I have to say, I am like a detective, a private eye. I will stalk you. I will find out everything about you. And uh, that's if you're trying to work with me. <laughs> I don't do this on a general basis, but if somebody approaches me and wants to work with me in terms of my artwork, I'm going to, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to do the behind the scene things. I'm going to look you up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you are. I'm going to look up your gallery. I'm going to look up the address. I'm going to do Google street view and make sure it's in a legitimate gallery um with a um like a sign out front that i can see it's a for real thing and then i'm gonna look and see how old that gallery how long has it been there for so i really do my background check and so jan had asked if we wanted to communicate together on i think it was whatsapp that we would actually have a telephone conversation and i think the really the only question i asked him uh through instagram was like did you want to just post my my paintings online and then if they sell, I ship them because I don't do that. And so I thought that was gonna be an easy way to shut down this question. And he said, no, no, you would mail them here and uh, you would mail them rolled. I would restretch them 
and then when they sell, you would get paid. So I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty good. So we did have a conversation later on that day and the conversation went, oh, I did my checks. Like I found like it was a legitimate place and it looked wonderful. I looked up the artists that were already in there. I also, Jan at that time had already friended me on Facebook as well as Instagram. So I was able to look into his world as well, which made me feel quite comfortable. And then after the conversation, I, um, I was a little embarrassed when we hung up because I was like, hmm, I really asked no questions. <laughs> I think I just, I intuitively knew that he was a for real person and that he had a gift for picking artwork that would sell in his area. A lovely man and I really have enjoyed the last year working with him and his gallery. So that's the story of how I got into a gallery in Denmark. Thank you for that, Jan. I appreciate that still every day. I give thanks for that. Um, okay, let's see. I looked in the camera. You know why I keep looking in the camera? Because it's right there. <laughs> I, one day I'm just gonna like turn it off so that I can't see it. But my fear with that is I can't see if my battery's going dead. I can't see if somehow my camera shut off. Um, and so that's why we have to keep that flap over so I can actually tell what's going on. Okay, so let's see if there's any more questions here that I should answer. Okay, uh, the other question that I got, um, a summaration of a lot of people who answered or asked a question was like, where do I get my art supplies? Whether that be painting supplies like in uh, acrylic paints or stretchers. So Desire's art store is, uh, I think it's based in Montreal. It's a Canadian art store and they reached out to me. So they asked if I wanted to become a zone member uh, which meant that I could order either online through them or actually send an email, send them my information of what I wanted and, and a shopper kind of would go and put that order in for me and I would get a discount above everything that's listed on their website. And uh, I thought, oh, all right, I like a discount. And so there are some stipulations about becoming a zone member. I think you have to spend like $2,500 a year uh, in order to keep your account active. I said, yes, absolutely. I would totally love to be a part of um, the Desires program. It's really great, I have to say. I am super impressed with Desire's art store. They are not, there is no relationship between us. I do not get a discount above anything else. Um, we are not in a, like a business partnership kind of thing. So I am truly speaking from the heart. Uh, when I say that Desire's has done wonders for my ability to get art supplies when I need them, I do buy in bulk and I do prepare ahead of time. So if you're looking for a gallon of paint by next week, especially with the pandemic, you're not gonna get that. So I buy in bulk. And um, because of that, I can think in terms ahead of time, what colors am I gonna use? And I can send my order three months in advance. They have time to go directly to the manufacturer, which would be like Golden and Liquitex. And as we know, those are companies that are in the States. And so it gives them time to be able to give me what I need. Even my canvases I'm starting to get from them because they can ship a pretty good size where Curry's does not. So uh, I'm like, I think I got, um, like 40 by 60 inch canvases from Desaris, which is amazing that I can get them mailed to me. I love that ability. I don't want to waste my time, especially right now with the pandemic going out. Well, right now we're, we're in a lockdown. So <laughs> there is no going out to an art store right now. Everything is closed. That's non-essential. There's curbside pickup and they don't fit in my car. So, or my vehicle. So I would have to go and rent a vehicle. So the, the fact that they can ship that size to me is really helpful. And then anything larger from that or like a 48 and 48, they'll still ship, but anything larger than that, then I have to get them made here locally. Um, there's a company that I use here in Toronto that they make, uh, all my frames for me, my really large ones. Uh, sometimes I get them stretched, sometimes I don't get them stretched. It really depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I like the act of actually doing a little bit more of the laborious work that comes behind the scenes of painting. It just makes me feel, it's just a change of pace and sometimes a change of pace can really rejuvenate my ability to paint. So I, I'm not releasing that name only because I know that they are extremely overwhelmed and really far behind with their work. So I'm gonna keep that off the record, but I hope that if you are in Ontario, 
um, or anywhere in Canada that you might consider using Desiris because they are a lovely company and they really understand the purpose and the point of what customer service is. Let them know that I referred you. It's always good to have a good working relationship with your art stores. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys so much for sending in those questions. I thought it was so much fun to do. I loved reading them all. And I hope that I picked some good ones that I piqued your interest with and that I was able to answer them uh, in a way that kept you entertained. Um, but anyway, I wanna say thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video, thumbs up and I will see you all soon. Um, all right, let's get started. I looked in that video. You know, you know what I'm gonna start doing? I'm gonna start doing like, I'm gonna keep 